Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well and today I'm going to be going over the topic of Rylands v Fletcher. So Rylands v Fletcher is a taught topic, meaning it will be on the second paper in section B as a problem question. So today I'll be going over each element that was decided in this topic and the cases to go along with it. So let's get on with the video. So there are five elements that have been set out in the case of Rylands v Fletcher. And that is the thing must be accumulated on the land and brought onto the land. It must be something likely to do mischief or damage if it escapes. It must be a non-natural use of the land. It must be something that escapes and the damage must not be too remote. So let's start with the first section, bringing the thing onto the land. So bringing something onto the land is basically what the name suggests. The defendant must bring the thing onto their land and it must gather there, accumulate there. So that means if it's naturally present there, there is no liability because the defendant didn't outrightly bring that onto their land. It just naturally appears there. So a great case for that would be Giles v Walker, where the weeds spread onto the claimant's land and the defendant had no liability for that because that is natural. And the same goes for accumulation. If it naturally accumulates there, there is no liability for the defendant. So that would be Ellison v Ministry of Defence where the rainwater accumulated and flooded the claimant's land. The Ministry of Defence had no liability as the rainwater naturally accumulated there. So the next thing must be, it must be a thing likely to do mischief or damage if it escapes the land. So in the past, this has been things like gas, electricity, tree branches, all of those have been held to do mischief if they escape. So a case for this would be Hale and Hale v Jellingbros, sorry. This is mine and my friend's favourite case. I don't know why, we just find it so strange. It's not something you'd hear every single day. And this was where a chair fairground ride, you know, the ones that you sit in and it swings you around, flew off the ride and hit someone. I will never forget this case. I think it is so random and not funny because I can't really laugh at it I just think it's just so random it's so easy to remember for me however this was overruled by Transco v Stockport which is a very important case and this will keep coming up later in the video and this overruled saying that it's not possible to claim for personal injury under Rylands v Fletcher so that has been completely overruled by this case and the thing itself does not need to be hazardous like a chair fairground ride it wouldn't be hazardous itself so it would just have to be hazardous when it escapes <laughs> so a non-natural use was held to be an extraordinary or unusual use of the land. You never guess which case that comes under. <laughs> that is from Transgo v Stockport. And another case, or another two cases you could use, is Rickards v Lothian, which is where a blocked pipe caused a flood, but this was not held as a non-natural use of land. And British Selenese v A.H. Hunt, which is when metal strips blew onto a power station causing a failure, which is natural. The defendant couldn't help that the wind blew the strips away. <laughs> so this is fine in itself. However, the storage of domestic land things are normally not held to be unnatural, even if they are seemingly hazardous. So this could be fire spreading, a water supply, things like that that is not usually seemed as a non-natural use of the land. So bringing back our favourite case, Transgovi Stockport, 
this was where a water pipe leaked and an embankment collapsed showing the gas mains so however this was also held as a natural use of land as water in pipes are natural that's where they're supposed to be well it's very normal for water to be in pipes so it wasn't held as a non-natural use of land and sorry storage of chemicals was held to be unnatural even though it is important for local employment and this case would be cambridge water v eastern counties leather the final element is it must escape and cause damage this is a very short section it's really what it says on the tin it must escape from one property onto an adjoining one and a case for this would be reed v j lyons and this was where some explosives detonated but there is no liability as they didn't escape they just exploded that's what explosives do they explode who would have thought so i'm just going to run through some defenses that can be used for Rylands v fletcher some are specific to the topic some are just defenses as a whole and this could be an act of god an act of a stranger valenti third party statutory authority and contributory neg negligence so i'll put the cases you can use for this on the screen as i read them out and those are the defenses that can be used in a rylands v fletcher question so that is rylands v fletcher pretty much summed up honestly i thought this topic was a lot bigger than it really is when you simplify it down to the length i have i just remember going through it in class for such a long time maybe i made that up who knows but yes i hope you enjoyed this video i hope this helped and i will see you next time thank you for watching bye